here we are. I see my culverts over here to the right. How do I get there? Uh -huh. Okay, we'll try going this way. I have no idea where to go. But there's the culverts. We're going to be on our left. I see a gate here. I don't know which ones I'm taking. This is the entrance, apparently. So there's probably a shipping office over there. I know it's in building two, whatever that means. Oh, there's a forklift guy over there coming out of the smoke. <laughs> He'll probably come and tell me where he wants me. Alright, so he's going in. He's going to, uh, going to figure out what uh, freight is mine. It's these right here. Sorry, almost dropped you. These right here. He just He's just got to figure out which one's mine. There's multiple loads. I have a, a note in my computer here saying that I'm truck number five. So he's going to go in and check the paperwork to see if, uh, see if that means anything. Yeah, we're going to be taking a load of those anyways back to Ildershane. Well, super easy to tie down. Looks like they're all bundled properly, all shimmed in there. Yeah, throw them on, throw a couple of straps over, and we can give her back to Manitoba. Get out of this smoke. It's crazy. It's like I'm in the middle of the world's biggest bonfire. Except I can't see the fire anywhere, I just see the smoke. It smells like bonfire though. I can guarantee you my clothes are going to smell like bonfire when I get home. Britt's going to wonder, where, where have you been? Roasting wieners, that's all. Roasting wieners. Should have brought some marshmallows. There you go, we're all loaded up, buttoned up, strapped down, everything else. Gotta find the exit here if I can see through all this smoke. Oh, it's gotten thicker again. There's actually a hill right over there that I could see five minutes ago. Behind those trees right there. I, I could see it. Five minutes, yikes. It's coming in thick now, it's time to get out of town.
boat, right? <laughs> wow, look at this. This is less, yeah, it's about a quarter mile. Down to about a quarter mile, I'd say. Oh, that just burns my throat.
remember summers being this smoky every summer. Every single summer. And I also don't remember it being so dry all the time. Like we used to get tons of snow every winter. I could build tunnels in our yard. We had so much snow in our yard. Tons of it. We could slide off the roof of the house into the snow bank. So much snow. Now we hardly get anything. I wanted to buy a snowmobile when I got to this age and now I'm like, is it even worth it? We don't get that much snow. A motorcycle is more worth it now because now we got hot, long summers. Like it hasn't rained in weeks, like properly. I think we had one good rainfall, one or two good rainfalls this, this season so far. And usually we get tons. And then August is usually the, the hot, dry month. But now it's already hot and dry in July, and if August pulls through like it's with its regular weather, man, there's no rain on the way. How about in Europe? You know, you guys have forest fires like this all the time, or is it just like, maybe it's just up here because there's so much wilderness, and if, and if lightning strikes way out in the bush, we don't necessarily realize it started a fire right away because it's hundreds of miles away from any civilization. And we don't realize it until it's huge. <laughs> There's not too many people living up here. We're very spread apart. Lots and lots of wilderness. Lots of forest. Canada is sort of like one of the Earth's lungs. The boreal forest up here is so massive and it produces a ton of oxygen for the entire planet. The downside to that is if it doesn't get enough rain, it turns tinder dry and it burns down like this. But forest fires are healthy, you gotta remember that. It's healthy for the forest to burn down every now and then. You just gotta make sure that it doesn't come near any human civilization. You know? Forest fires are a natural thing, it's how the forest renews itself. It's a healthy thing. Just, uh, it's bad for us humans, and you know, bad for the critters out there too, obviously. But a wild world we live in. A wild world. Look at these rocks, eh? I'd love to watch them blast these rocks away. We don't get anything like that in Manitoba. Not much, anyway. I'm headed eastbound about Trans Canada right now, back towards Manitoba.
sent me a load for tomorrow, I bet. taking the same trailer out tomorrow so I just stayed hooked up I just parked the truck there and left it left it hooked up to the trailer out in our yard and uh, tomorrow I got to go pick up a load in Winnipeg and go up to Fisher River up uh, north in the Interlake I think that's north of Peguis it's it's pretty far it was 200 and some it's about the distance from here to Kenora that we did today except going north instead of east those culverts I picked up I dropped off right here in Ildeshane. Got there before they closed. Which is great, because now I don't have to deliver it in the morning. So first thing in the morning, we'll run into Western Winnipeg. I think it's another lumber load. You remember that lumber load that we uh, delivered to uh, downtown Winnipeg a couple of weeks ago? It's like those trusses or something. I believe it'll be a very similar type of load, just going really far up north. I don't know what they're building up there, but we're gonna find out. And there they are, can you see them? Right there. I delivered some of those. I think we had five trucks picking up there today. I don't know if they're all gonna unload today, but I got unloaded anyways. I was truck number five. Maybe there's more than that, but I know for sure at least I was number five. The smoke isn't really clearing up yet. It seems to still be getting worse. I'm guessing, yeah, we still got about a mile of visibility, maybe a little less. Fun times, fun times. I gotta rush home now and get my motorcycle. I'm bringing it in for an oil change tonight yet. Since I bought it, uh, the previous owner, I bought it from a friend, a coworker. They don't know when, uh, uh, well, they didn't change the oil this year yet, I don't think. I think it was changed last year. So it's time to get that changed. I hit 10,000 miles on it last week. It's time to get that oil changed. I don't like changing the oil mid-riding season. It wastes valuable riding days. Like, I could have ridden in today in the morning. I could have ridden in tomorrow, too. But tomorrow, I'm guessing I'll drop the bike off today. They'll do the oil change tomorrow morning, and I can pick it up tomorrow afternoon. Oh, excuse me. That's two days that I... Could have been riding. So usually I would get the oil changed or even change it myself. Uh, change it at the beginning of the season like I did with the CBR. And then it's good for the whole season, right? Unless I do a lot of riding. Then. But I, I did ask uh, if the oil was changed this spring and I and she said that the oil was not changed this spring and that it was changed last year. So it's probably got quite a few miles on it. And uh, if the oil's from last year already, that means it's been breaking down a lot. And uh, I didn't want to take it any further this this season, just in case. And I just bought it. I, I don't want it to break right away. I want to take really good care of it. So it's better safe than sorry. I'm going to go put some new oil in there. It's not that expensive. It's just better to do it than uh, have something go wrong, right? And have, have to rebuild the whole engine or something. 